what's going on everybody we're here at the reef tank today we got a cool video we are doing a setup of a booster pump for the RODI system my name is Paul if you like fish videos please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell let's do it so here is the booster pump that we are setting up today from Aquatic Life thank you Aquatic Life for sponsoring the build by sending this so first things first a good old unboxing open it up Smart Buddies now include an internal check valve. No additional check valves are needed. Very awesome. So let's see. Just got to pull it out of the box. That's really all there is to it, it looks like. Got your instruction bag. Just a card if you're you know not happy with the product, want a 150% warranty. You know, just kind of a little card about random stuff about the product. And then here is the installation guide, it looks like. So what this pump does is it's a booster pump for 50 to 100 gallon RO systems. So with my system being 100 gallons per day, this is going to work for it. And let's go ahead and unwrap it now. And then it's saran wrapped. Very nice. So here is the diagram. It tells you what these are all for. As you can see, this is filtered water from membrane or DI. Looks like this is out and then from membrane waste and then from pre-filters. It's got all that stuff, tells you what goes where. And uh, looks like it's very solidly made. Standard plug. Yeah, this is gonna be super cool, guys. This is gonna be perfect for the system we're going to test and see how much this booster pump works what i got here there we go we got the connections here what we're going to do is hook it up and have this after the booster pump to see how much more psi this is pushing and the other product i bought was flm3 it is a flow meter by hm digital on amazon as well so the reason that i bought this was I want to know for sure how many gallons that I am putting into the brute trash cans when we're making our water. Simple, in, out. It's got, uh, you know, your battery here. I'm not going to pull this out quite yet, but you got it all set and it's going to tell me how many gallons have went through it and then I could reset it and all that stuff. Um, so that when I do water changes, I know how much to pull out because I know how much water I actually have. All right, guys, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and set the Smart Buddy here inside the under part of the sink. Now, what we got to do is we got to configure this a little bit right here. So we're going to just take it apart and then we got to reroute everything. So we're going to do that. All right, so what we're doing now is disassembling the RO unit. And this is the four stage twist in by Aquatic Life. So again, all about disassembling, removing the cartridges from the mount, and disassembling all of the hoses. The reason why you're wanting to do this is because you are going to be rerouting the hoses. You're going to be adding hose. So getting it apart like we're doing here is going to help make this process much much easier and also to pull the hose that is in between each cartridge out is very easy or much easier when you are talking about doing it when it's not together Okay guys, so now that we got the membrane moved over here and the DI taken off, we could start to route the tubing. Now that we have the DI cartridge off and we got the membrane moved over to the DI slot, now we can start getting things going. So what we're doing is we're adding the line for the water that comes out of the carbon block and the sediment filter. So what you do is, your water line goes into your carbon block and sediment filter, then it comes out of that, and then it starts to go to the Smart Buddy booster pump. Definitely make sure you have some nice cutters with you so that you have nice clean cuts on the tubing so that everything sits into the adapter. So we're just going through and getting things going. What I decided to do was build a bypass 
for the system because I have things hooked up with the RO um, DI Flood Guardian. So currently everything has to go through the solenoid. So I wanted to make the bypass so that when I need to fill up a brute trash can to do water changes or I want to get water on demand, I have the ability to do so. Now that the bypass is done and the flood guardian line is done and they are together, what you do now is you route that to the top right section of the booster pump. Then from there you add line again so the water goes in through the top and it comes out through the bottom. Now we're just routing that line to the membrane cartridge entrance. Definitely take your time and all that good stuff. Now we are setting up the drain part for the system. Yeah, so after you do the section for the wastewater, now you can see we are coming out on the other side of the membrane and that goes into the other section of the booster pump. And then the output from that booster pump goes into the input on the DI side, which you see we're hooking up now. And then you got your output coming out of the DI. Recap, you got your water coming into the sediment block to the carbon block. Then from your carbon block, you go into the top right section of the booster pump. Then the bottom right section of the booster pump goes to the input of the membrane. Then you wanna set up the drain for the wastewater on the membrane cartridge that goes to the top of the booster pump in the middle section. And then the bottom middle section goes to your trap. Then your output on the membrane goes to the top left of the booster pump. Then from the bottom left of the booster pump, that goes to the inlet of the DI. And then you got your outlet of your DI and you're set. All right, now that everything is all hooked up, what we're gonna do is turn the water supply on. Oh my gosh. All right, everyone, so after doing some testing, I am gonna return this to Amazon because it just was not working quite right. You can see that it only says 18 gallons has gone through, but that's not true. We filled up a 30 some gallon uh, trash can and filled up my reservoir a few times. So it's definitely not working right. So I'm gonna return that. What I did in its place was this went from here into the, into the meter and then it came out and went to here. All right guys, so you saw how we routed everything. Now over here is the main line, which is off at the moment. So the water, comes in and goes through these blocks, comes out here, comes down and runs to this section right over here with these two. Now this continues to flow to that solenoid, comes up around and comes to this T. That is for the flood guardian. What I did was right over here, I made a bypass so if I ever want to fill up a trash can, I don't have to do it through that solenoid so it doesn't wear it out, right? Now they connect together. So this bypass comes up to this T, which the solenoid feeds through to here, goes to the black tube, which goes to this section. And then as you saw how we built it, everything goes back together. Now, in all reality, once I turn this on, the main, and then I flip this on and flip this on, water should pour out of here without the flood guardian being on. So remember, the way it's set up right now is if I didn't have this bypass, I would have to use the flood guardian in order for water to flow through. I didn't wanna do that. So let's start first things first. There we go. We can see how everything moved. We're gonna go and flip that on. Hear the system moving right now? What it's doing is it's pushing water through because some of this stuff wasn't full. So what I figured out just now is because I did the bypass, that does make the flood guardian go on. So what I need to do is get another one of these shutoffs, clip it on here, so when I'm going to fill up a bucket, I can shut this here so no water will flow through it because remember the bypass is gonna cause water to flow through here. That is just what is gonna happen. 
So let's go ahead and test it though. So we got our line right here. Here we go. Perfect. I'm just gonna put this here for now. So like I mentioned, it does work, but I am going to, without a doubt, have to go and add another shut off so that when I am gonna fill up a, a bucket, it's going to shut off the flow to the actual RO system, to the reservoir for the tank. All right, so we got another shutoff valve, and I ended up changing it around to where the water that comes out of the DI cartridge goes through the probe for the TDS meter, then it comes down to this, and then to this. It was the other way around. So again, the water flows out of the DI, goes through the meter, comes out here, goes through this, which goes into the room over there uh, for filling up the ATO reservoir. Now this T here allows me to use this hose to fill up barrels and whatnot. So what we're gonna do is open this. Now when we open this, you're gonna hear the system run. That's because even though I have a bypass here, because it's bypassing the solenoid and it's coming through all of this, it's still gonna make its way to the reservoir. So let's, let's, let's do that. So let's turn that on. You can hear it running, right? So now the only way this is gonna stop is when the system fills up on the other end. So here's the TDS meter, it's reading zero right now, which is awesome. Now when I close this, it should shut off. See how it shut off? So I'm really glad that I noticed that because now all I need to do is pull this guy out and we can go over here, let's do this. And then we're gonna turn this guy on right here. Bam. So now, when I want to fill up the barrel, there we go. I got that set all on the bypass so we don't have to use the solenoid. And it allows everything to function the way I want it. So now we gotta just open this and shut this and we're golden. All right, everyone, we're here at the trash can, ready to get this guy filled up with the booster pump. So we just need to get this in place. All right, it's in place. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the little clip. Now let's go ahead, just let it go down, and let's go turn the water on and see how it flows. There we go, there is our flow coming out of there. This is much faster than it looked before, so let's hope that this fills up nice and quick. All right, so how I mentioned, everything is all set underneath the cabinet. Here's the flood guardian. Push the button, hear the beep. And there we go, filling up. Now check out that flow rate. Can you guys see how much that's dripping in there? That's because of the booster pump. Let's look at some old footage for you guys to get a really good idea. Push that play button and you guys could watch. There it is, water starting to flow in. Now I'm going to shut it off, click it again. And there you go, no more water flowing in. Huge major shout out and thank you to Aquatic Life for sending out the Smart Buddy Booster Pump to help making RODI water much faster and much more efficient. I hope the video was uh, descriptive and I hope it was something that uh, was helpful for you guys. If you thought so, please consider giving it a thumbs up and commenting down below. If you guys are fans of fish videos, freshwater, salt water, anything to do with fish, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Um, again, link in the description to Aquatic Life's website. Take a look at the Smart Buddy Booster Pump. You can also take a look at the uh, four-stage twist-in. That's what I bought, um, was the four-stage twist-in, and then Aquatic Life sent the Smart Buddy Booster Pump uh, as a sponsorship for the video, uh, for the channel, for the tank, all that good stuff. So thanks again. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tanked.